I think everyone needs to know how to roast a chicken. Do you know how to roast a chicken? Roast chicken is the ultimate kitchen staple, and while yes, you can buy a rotisserie chicken at the market, you can't control the seasonings on that store-bought version as you can at home. And by the way, I use the term seasonings pretty loosely because often on those store-bought versions, the seasonings look a little something like this. My homemade easy roast chicken recipe, on the other hand, has just three ingredients. Chicken, olive oil, and wholesome seasonings. We're also not getting fancy with today's recipe. There's no stuffing the chicken, no setting it on a bed of vegetables, and really no chopping or prep work involved at all. Today's recipe is all about mastering the best whole roasted chicken with a flavorful crispy skin and ultra juicy meat. And simple is often best. So let me show you how to make it. To get started, you'll need a four to five pound chicken. I'm using an organic bird today because that's how I roll. And you'll wanna take the chicken out of the fridge about 30 to 45 minutes before roasting so that it can come to room temperature. This just helps the chicken cook more evenly in the oven. When you remove the chicken from its plastic wrapping, you'll likely have a bit of liquid that also seeps out. So just make sure you've got a plate underneath to catch that. Also, don't forget that chicken, like turkey, will have a packet of giblets in the cavity and you'll wanna remove that before roasting. Preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius, and we're going to roast at a consistent temperature today rather than start high and then lower the temp because this recipe is all about simplicity. And then move your oven rack to the lower one third of your oven. In terms of equipment, you just need an instant read thermometer, which you'll use later, and an oven safe pan. I prefer cast iron for this as it's heavy duty and it disperses the heat evenly. So once your chicken is at or nearly at room temperature, you'll need to soak up all that residual liquid and pat it dry with a paper towel. Extra moisture is the arch nemesis of crispy skin, so really do try to get the chicken as dry as possible. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're not going to stuff the cavity with anything today, so you can go ahead and truss the legs. To do that, slide some kitchen twine underneath the legs and then do a figure eight by wrapping the twine back across and under the legs again, then pull it tight to pull the legs together and tie it in a knot. If you have some extra twine, you can just use scissors to snip that off. Place the chicken in your pan and then drizzle just a small amount, about a tablespoon or so, of olive oil or avocado oil on top of the chicken. You don't want too much oil because again, you don't want moisture, but you do want just enough so that you have a thin, even layer all over and under the bird for your seasonings to stick. So in terms of seasonings, add a good amount of kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper, and then about a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. If you don't have this spice blend, you can add individual spices such as dried basil, thyme, and oregano. You could even add dried garlic or really any other spices you prefer. This is where you get to tweak the recipe to your liking. Once you've rubbed those spices all over the chicken, place the chicken in the oven and roast it for 70 to 90 minutes, depending on the size of your bird. I always check on it a bit early just to double check, but this chicken was close to five pounds and it took about 85 minutes to cook. Now, this part isn't required, but if you want the most golden, crispiest skin, baste the chicken about halfway through with the juices from the pan. There may not be a lot of juices at first, but you'll find that more accumulate in the pan as the chicken continues to cook. And when I open the oven door to baste the chicken, I also like to turn the pan because most ovens have hot spots and it's common for the back of the oven to cook faster than the front. So this just ensures an evenly golden bird as well. Now the chicken is about 10 minutes from being done and I'll baste it again. And all I have to say is look at how gorgeously golden the skin is getting now. Use your instant read thermometer in the thickest part of the thigh to take the temperature and it should read 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. If you place the thermometer in the breast meat, it should read a lower temperature, about 155 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 68 to 74 degrees Celsius when it's done. And remember, the chicken will still increase in temperature as it rests. So now comes the hardest part, and that's being patient and letting it rest for a good 15 minutes. You can baste the chicken one last time if you'd like, but otherwise, don't touch it. 
Giving the chicken time to rest allows the juices to redistribute in the meat so that your meat stays all nice and juicy. And that's what you want rather than having those juices end up all over your cutting board when you slice into it. This roast chicken recipe is a weeknight favorite because it's a no fuss, easy chicken recipe. But if you want a slightly fancier roast chicken recipe, you can find one in my cookbook. Let me flip to the page and give you a sneak peek. My cookbook roast chicken recipe is perfect for meal prep because well, that's the theme of my cookbook and because it's two whole roasted chickens with fennel, pear, and onion on a sheet pan. This recipe is perfect if you wanna eat one chicken right away for dinner and then save the other one for later. But back to our current roast chicken recipe. Once it's rested, transfer the chicken to a cutting board and then carve it up the same way you'd carve up a turkey. If you haven't watched my easy, no fuss turkey recipe, make sure to watch that because it's the best darn Thanksgiving turkey you'll ever make. For this chicken, you can easily just pull off the wings and set those aside, then remove the twine that's around the legs. Use a sharp chef's knife to slice between the breast and the thigh and remove the entire leg, and then repeat that process on the other side. To remove the breast, slice down just off center from the breastbone and at a slight downward angle. When you're done, you'll have two chicken breasts, two legs, and two wings. And then comes my favorite part, which is that I then get to enjoy all of the remaining little pieces of meat that may have gotten left on the bird. It's sort of my immediate snack before I serve up this roast chicken recipe to others. And besides, you know I'm all about preventing food waste. But today, I'm meal prepping and storing this chicken rather than serving it up. And truth, the chicken wings never make it into storage. Those crispy little pieces always get devoured right away. So once I'm done with my nibbles, I'll put the legs and breasts into a container for easy dinner recipes throughout the week. Or if you prefer, you can store this chicken for up to three months in your freezer. Once that's done, I'll save the chicken carcass in a plastic bag in the freezer so that I can also make bone broth in the future. And yes, I now realize I have to make a video of my homemade bone broth recipe for you as well.